Grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. We want to welcome you to another Freedom Moment. It's Sunday, September 26th, 2021. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you and bless you and praise you. We thank you, Lord God, for another day, another opportunity, Lord God, to see the light of your blessings. Father, we thank you for being merciful to us. We come into your presence, Lord, by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, Lord, not by our own righteousness, but by his righteousness, his work in and through us. Father, we thank you for what you're doing, Lord, as you go through this nation and begin to heal us, Lord God, from the inside out. Touch each family, Lord God. Touch our communities. Touch, Lord God, our hearts so that we can be better servants and love one another as you commanded us to, Lord. Take this time in charge, Lord God. Speak to us so that we walk away from this freedom moment, restored, renewed, ready to do your will. Father, we thank you ahead of time. In Jesus' name, everyone in agreement said, Amen. Looking for fellowship, prayer, or Bible study? You can get in touch with us at home or on the go. Just go to www.freedomfellowshiprb.org or you can catch us on Twitter at Freedom Rockaway. See you there. Scripture lesson for this morning is taken from the book of Exodus. We're reading from Exodus chapter 20, from the New International Version, Exodus chapter 20, beginning at verse 18. When the people saw the thunder and lightning, and heard the trumpet, and saw the mountain in smoke, they trembled with fear. They stayed at a distance, and said to Moses, Speak to us yourself, and we will listen. But do not have God speak to us, or we will die. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. God has come to test you, so that the fear of God will be with you to keep you from sinning. The people remained at a distance while Moses approached the thick darkness where God was. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites this, You have seen for yourselves that I have spoken to you from heaven. Do not make any gods to be alongside me. Do not make for yourselves gods of silver or gods of gold. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. Text for today's message is taken from the Gospel according to St. John. John's Gospel, the fifth chapter, we're taking one verse for our text. John chapter 5 and verse 25. Listen to what the Gospel says. Very truly, I tell you, a time is coming and has now come when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you, we bless you, we thank you once again, Lord God, and we simply say, we want to hear from you. Father, a word that changes us from the inside out, a word that changes our lives, a word that changes the way we serve you, a word that changes the way we treat one another, a word that builds up our faith and causes us to live a courageous life in Christ. Change us, Lord God. Have your way, Lord God. Speak to our hearts. Give us understanding and discernment, Lord God so that we walk away well-fed, Lord, ready to share this word with others. 
Father, we thank you ahead of time. Send down your anointing. It makes teaching easy and understanding even easier. We'll give you all of the glory and we'll give you all of the praise. It's in Jesus' name we ask. Everyone in agreement said, Amen. Good news. This is Jesus telling us this. He said, the time is coming and it's now. Somebody say now. It's now come when dead people will hear the voice of of the Son of God, and live. Good news. Those that have no life left in them will hear and then come back to life. Praise God. This is not just talking about the resurrection. This is talking about living the life in Christ. Here and now, those that are struggling and have no life left in them will hear the word from the Son of God, and they'll come back to life. Those that hear, let me ask you a question. Can you hear God speaking? Amen. I know you want more life, but can you hear God speaking? Are you even paying attention In our scripture lesson, we were listening to uh, what Moses went through as he went to get the law from God. Exodus chapter 20 is where he goes up to the mount and, and gets the tablets and the law. And God causes lightning and thunder and loud sounds, a loud display at the mountain. And why all of that? All of that noise and loud display. He simply said, you're hearing from me. You're hearing my voice as we just read. Why would God do all of that, that loud display? Well, remember, they just received the law, the covenant. So imagine, just imagine for a second, missing a vital part of a contract, a vital part of a covenant, an agreement, one that has life and death as a clause. Think about that. That's how important it is that you hear every word and get it right because it's a contract. You know, the real problem for most is one of recognition. We don't recognize the voice of God. Amen. And it's amazing because one of the first gifts that we have, even from an infant, is the ability to recognize a voice. We know our mother's voice. My parents have passed on and went to be with the Lord. But I I guarantee you, if the phone rang and my father was on the other end, I'd be able to recognize his voice. Just think about it. Think about one of your friends calling you. They don't have to make an introduction. You recognize their voice, even without seeing them. You say, hey, that's my buddy there. Do we recognize the voice of God? That's usually the problem. In John chapter 12, Jesus was speaking and then the Father spoke from heaven. And the Bible tells us in verses 28 and 29 that the people that were standing there, although God was speaking from heaven, the Bible says that they thought it was just thunder. Amen. They didn't recognize the very voice of the Creator. Can you hear God speaking? You need to talk for today's message. Have you heard? That's really the question. Have you heard? And yes, it's a very important question. So we need to know, how does he speak? Because I tell you, if we can figure out how God speaks, then we have an edge on getting this life restored to us. Come on, our lives weigh in the balance. The Bible says that uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word spoke everything into existence. Have you heard from God? 
Have you been able to recognize his voice? So how does he speak? Let's review it real quick. Numero uno. He speaks in nature. Amen. In nature. The world around us. That's right. That's how he speaks. When you look at the Bible, the Bible talks about all of the different things that God created. And, and he says that the, the creature can see the creator through his creation. He speaks in the natural realm. In Psalm 19 and verse 1, David says that heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Yes. God speaks in the natural realm. How does he do it, Pastor? Well, there's the wisdom of design. <laughs> Amen. Look at the universe. Look how it's designed. And, and let me tell you this. Uh, simple logic. If something is designed, watch this. It has a designer. <laughs> Amen. God has placed his designer's signature on creation. All of creation. The world. The universe. How far the sun is and the moon is from the earth. And how gravity works. And, and we're in perfect alignment. huh? How the sun rises and sets. How the tides move. The wisdom of design. Things didn't just plop into place. Think about it. Think about how your body works. Huh? He speaks to us in the natural. Are you listening to him in nature? David says in Psalm 33 and verse 9, he says, he spoke and it was. <laughs> wow, that, that's real simple. God spoke and it was. Listen, if you, need, if you need more life, if you need something done, ask God to speak into your life. Because when he speaks, it is. And, you know, we're talking about design, right? Think about it. We hear and we speak. Amen. I'm speaking to you now. <laughs> and guess what? If we can hear and we can speak, then you know that our creator can do the same. It would be ridiculous if the one who created the tongue couldn't use his tongue. The one who created the ear couldn't hear. Design. He created us. And besides the wisdom of design, how's about the glory of purpose? God made purpose. He, put, he placed purpose in everything. There's a reason for everything. There's a purpose for everything that he has created. Praise God. That's how you know that God is in nature and he's speaking through it. We don't have to think to blink. Wow. It's called involuntary. Wow. That's cool. Why? Because we're designed that way and God created our eye structure with a purpose. Huh? Listen, the purpose of the nose is one thing. The purpose of a mouth is another thing. The purpose of the eye and the ear are different. Praise God. God speaks in nature, not only through design, but through purpose. And then there's the other thing. There's the reality of function. God creates things to function a certain way, not just to have a purpose, but how they function. Amen. The nose is for breathing. You can breathe through your mouth, but that's not your primary mouth's purpose. Huh? The mouth is for eating. The eye is for seeing. It's function. Praise God. God creates function. We're the product of what we heard as kids. 
So God is trying to speak life into us. Huh? When somebody's speaking negative into a child, that child then begins to function in an improper way. Amen. God wants us to function as Christians. So what did he do? He gave us his word. He wants us to function as people who love one another. So what did he do? He gave us his word. God also uses patterns. Amen. God speaks to us in patterns. Huh? He never changes. So he speaks to us because he does things a certain way. So when I see it done a certain way, I say, hey, that's God. If I see something done a certain way, I say, he's trying to communicate with me. Why? Because God does everything by a pattern. In Genesis chapter 3, uh, the Bible tells us that his pattern for Adam and Eve was to walk in the garden every day. He walked in the garden. And in Genesis 3, it says, we learn one thing about him. When he's walking, he's also talking. His voice is heard as he's walking. Amen. He speaks as he walks. Praise God. God speaks in nature. That's one of the ways that he speaks. Here's another way that God speaks. Because again, we don't want to miss out on, on what he's saying. He speaks in circumstances. Amen. God speaks in circumstances. In Mark's gospel, in the fourth chapter, in the middle of the storm, the Bible says that Jesus got up, rebuked the wind. He spoke to the wind. And he said to the waves, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. That's when God speaks. When you're in bad circumstances, all kinds of troubles, when you're going through that storm, that's when you hear if you really want to, that's when you listen. By the way, that's the best way to get somebody's full attention. Amen. When they're in trouble. I've never seen people pray more until they're in trouble. Going through something. Going through difficult times. In need. That's when they speak to God. And that's when they're looking to hear from him. In the middle of circumstances. Think about the story of Moses. Moses and the burning bush. Remember before he went back into Egypt to free uh, the Israelites. Here he is. Moses has a confrontation with God on the mount and speaks to him through the burning bush. Uh, now look at the circumstances in which God spoke to him and which he heard God's voice. Moses, number one, was a fugitive. <laughs> he was wanted. Death sentence. He was a fugitive from Egypt. The other circumstance he was going through, he was old. He was 80 years old. Old age. That's some circumstance to go through. And then the other thing was, it was during a time period when his family were enslaved. Wow. What incredible circumstances. That's when you want to hear God's voice. That's when you want to hear the calming effect of your master say, peace, be still. The Bible tells us in 1 Samuel uh, chapter 30, and you can read this story for yourself. David and his men were living in Ziklag and they went out of Ziklag, the town, uh, for uh, a, a mission. And the enemy came in while they were gone and kidnapped all of the women and children, and took all of their belongings. And David came back into Ziklag. What an incredible uh, story. And when he found out that everything and everyone was gone, he fell on his face and wept before God. And the rest of the people that were with him were talking about killing him, stoning him to death, or hanging him. Why? Because they lost everything. And the Bible said that God spoke to David. The first thing David did, the Bible says, was encourage himself in the Lord his God. And then he asked God a question after he got the ephod. He first went to the priest and he said, listen, bring me the, the priestly garment and let me put that garment on and then let me ask God questions and then God will answer me. He put on the priestly garment. He put on the ephod and he listen to what he asked 
God. He said, in the middle of his circumstances, terrible circumstances, he says, should I go after them? Will I recover everything from the enemy? And listen to what God said, go after them. For surely you will recover everything. Listen, it's in circumstances. That's when I want to hear God's voice. By the way, I want to hear God's voice all the time. But you know something? When you're going through rough times, you need some guidance. You need some uh, a kind word. You need some uh, directions from God. In circumstances, that's when he speaks. Put on your listening ears, saints, so he can rebuke your problems. So he speaks in nature. He speaks in in your circumstances. And this is the primary way he speaks. He speaks in the Bible. Amen. Pick up the Bible. Oh, come on. I want to hear. I want to hear his voice audibly. But let me tell you something. If somebody's writing you letters and you're ripping up the letters or you're ignoring the letters, why would you want to hear from that individual by phone? If you really cherish an individual, you cherish what they wrote you too. He wrote us his word. Listen to what Paul writes to the church in Rome. In Romans chapter 15 and verse 4, he says, For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction. God wrote us a history book. Amen. To tell us what he usually does. Listen, God wrote the Bible. And then when we read the Bible, we see how God speaks. So that when we finally do hear him, we know it's him speaking. Praise God. Amen. When you read all of Paul's epistles, all the letters he wrote, he has a certain style of writing. So I know it's Paul. Amen. When I hear a certain way of speaking, I know it's a certain individual. Are you reading your Bible and then you're able to acknowledge that it's really God speaking to you? I like the way the person uh, screams out, hear ye, hear ye, read all about it. That's the power of the word of God written. And listen, when you hear from God, you know, God speaks through that Bible and he confirms his word with signs following. The beauty of hearing is this, watch this. The beauty of hearing is that you can't unhear. <laughs> Let me say that again. The beauty of hearing is that you can't unhear. So when God is speaking to you, and he speaks primarily through the word of God, it's eternal, his word. It doesn't change. That's why he jotted it down. He's not going to say something different. So what he said before is what he's going to say now. Amen. That's why we need to read that Bible, because it's an eternal word. And, and listen, if you try to unhear something, you know what you know what we call that? We call that ignoring. <laughs> when you don't want to hear something, we call it ignoring. Don't ignore the word of God. The Bible said that uh, earlier on when Samuel was still alive and young David and and what was 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 uh, not king yet, he went before the people to talk to them about the Lord. And you know what they said? They said they wanted a king. Wow, they wanted a king to rule over them. They didn't want to hear from God. They wanted to hear from a king. Folks would rather hear from, watch this, an image rather than the original. Wow. We'd rather hear from an image of God. That's what we are. We're just the image of God. So people would rather hear from me than they'd hear from God. That's wrong. Open up your Bible. God will speak to you. Get in that prayer closet. You'll hear his voice and he'll speak life back into you. Don't be like the individuals who want to hear from an image and not from the original. Pastor Mark Batterson says this, when you open your Bible, God opens his mouth. <laughs> Praise God. Wow. You really want to hear from God? Start opening your Bible. Get alone with him and that scripture and you'll see your prayers will change the responses to life will change the circumstances will change why because God speaks in nature God speaks 
in your circumstances, and God speaks in that Bible that you have. Amen. Open your Bible. Because you'll, you'll read a lot of parables. Jesus spoke in parables. And, and you know, parables confuse a lot of people. But here's what the parables are, are, are made to do. Parables are made to cause you to dig deeper. That's why Jesus spoke in parables. It causes individuals to dig. Don't throw away the word of God because it's hard to read. Dig deep. If God's saying something, he's saying something because he wants you to dig deeper. And listen, if you want really fresh water, fresh, cool water, you got to dig deep. Amen. When you dig deep, the, the, the deeper you dig, the fresher and cooler the water is. Let's get your takeaway point. Here's your takeaway point, saints. Hearing God's voice is the feast for a hungry soul. Wow. You want a feast? Are you hungry? That's really the question. When you go back into uh, Genesis, the early chapters, Adam and Eve weren't hungry to hear his voice. Why? Because they had just finished snacking on some fruit. <laughs> Listen, don't worry about the snacks. Stay hungry. Why? Because God will speak a feast for you and feed you when you're hungry. Hearing God's voice is a feast for a hungry soul. So how is he ultimately going to speak to us? And I'm telling you, this is my promise to you. God will speak. And this is eventually in our spirits. A lot of people don't recognize. That's what the problem is. Listen, did you know that you are a spirit and you have a soul and you live in a body? Yeah, God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we're triune also. Huh? We're spirit, soul, and body. We are spirits that have souls and live in bodies. So God speaks spirit to spirit. By the way, he speaks to your spirit. And your mind is part of your spirit. Your brain is part of your flesh. Your mind is part of your spirit. So when God speaks to our spirits, it gets relayed to our minds. I like the way the writer of Hebrews says, in the past, Hebrews chapter 1, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. Amen. The spirit of Jesus, that's the Holy Spirit, is none other, is speaking to our spirits all the time. Don't ignore it. Don't think it's just your own thoughts. It's God's spirit speaking to your spirit and that relays up to your mind. And by the way, your mind is the battlefield for your life. You have a sixth sense. Amen. A sixth sense. And that is supernatural. God is speaking to you. Spirit to spirit. In Romans chapter 8, Paul says this. He says, his spirit tells our spirit that we are his children. Don't look for any other spirit to speak to you. God's spirit will speak to you. Wait on God's spirit. Don't be like King Saul who couldn't wait. And when God wasn't speaking right away to him, he went to a witch. Amen. He went in the other direction because God wasn't giving him the immediate answers. Wait on God. Oh, I like the way Jesus says it. He that has an ear to hear, let him hear. Listen for God's voice, saints. He's trying to speak to you and to me. My friends, do you need the peace of God, the comfort of the Holy Spirit, the salvation of God through Christ Jesus? I challenge you to humble yourself before him now in the privacy of your home and talk to him. Ask him for forgiveness of your sins and invite him to be in charge of your life through the Lord Jesus. Trust him. Because he sees, he hears, and he'll respond to your honest prayer. Let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, we come before you and we thank you for what you're about to do as you heal us, as you heal our ears. Help us to be able to hear you thoroughly and to move by your voice. Faith comes by hearing. That's what you told us. So Lord, help us to hear so that our faith can grow and that you can speak life into us. We thank you, Lord God. Go with us this week, protecting us on every side. Send your angels to guard and to guide us. Father, we thank you once again. In Jesus' name, everyone in agreement said, Amen. Remember, John 8, 36. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free in Deed.